Good morning. Today we're working on this Gen 6, right? 454. It's our stroker motor that we're working on. And I was looking online and finding some misinformation about what your oil bypass valves are doing, right? I, I don't like to take other people's word for it and I saw some information that I believed was wrong and so I actually pulled out my bore scope and went through this engine to verify that uh, what I'm telling you is correct, right? So you have a couple of options, but uh, removing these bypass valves or blocking them off, I don't recommend, but you can make that decision for yourself. We're gonna go through what each bypass valve does to include, if you look at some of the diagrams online, right, some of the pictures, you'll see this picture a lot and it talks about E, A, B, C, D, and they're basically bypasses and some of the passages in the, uh, the Gen 6 big block. All right, so looking at our picture, we have E, A, B, C, and D. Uh, people don't understand what E is. It's just a, a passageway through the, through the rear cap, right? It flows through the rear cap. There's an O-ring that goes right here. Always replace this O-ring when you're taking this cap off. It'll be hard and brittle, and uh, it can be a place where it leaks, right? You lose oil pressure right here. So it flows over to your filter housing. Your filter housing routes it through your oil cooler passages, C and D, right? and then it flows back to the main galley. Because of the way this is drilled, when you put that screw on, screw on adapter in here to mount your filter directly to the block, right? It doesn't screw in far enough to block off this passage. So oil will always be flowing to C and D. There's two holes in C, right? Because of the way the passages are drilled, it's drilled straight into the block, passes through B above the bypass, goes to C right and then there's another hole that's drilled and I'll show you on the block it's drilled down at an angle so it goes to the bottom of C the one that's going from B to C is in the middle right and the one that goes to the bottom of C is drilled from over here and it flows by B to the main passageway right it connects to this B passage and I'll show you up here again but uh, when you put the oil cooler in here it actually has an adapter on it that blocks off between the two passages and forces forces your oil to come up and go through your oil cooler and then return back into D where it connects to that bottom passage and flows to your main oil galley. All right, so you also have another drill and I'll show you on, on, on the uh, block. You also have another passage that drilled, it's drilled through below B and connects all these together over here near the rear main cap and then you have a, a, a hole that's drilled from the top of the block to connect all these passages to your two main oil galleys around the camshaft. So again, comes up through the pump, right? O-ring E below the cap, goes to your filter housing, and then to your oil galleys. So looking at the filter housing itself, again, it goes to the, from the pump to the filter. So it comes through below bypass valve A, gets filtered, and then it's pushed through C and D. So filter to your oil cooler, to your oil galleys, right? But when you plug C and D because you're not using an oil cooler, you automatically bypass this oil cooler, right? Because these two passages are allowed to flow freely to each other to the main galley. And that's basically what you see here. So putting that plug in C and D, automatically bypasses this oil cooler. Bypass valve B is, is, is critical if you're running an oil cooler, but again, it also acts as a one-way valve to help hold up that oil. Because of the way these are these are designed, there's there's uh, four, four 90s in here, something like that, right? Your, so your oil has to make four 90s to get to this passageway. And leaving B in and putting it at a lower setting if you're not running a cooler will help hold up that oil to eliminate dry start conditions, right? So that's pretty self-explanatory, bypass valve A. Bypass valve A is critical. It will always be open along with B once the engine is started up, right? Both B and A will always be open. You're always flowing oil around the filter. That's just the nature of the beast. I've seen people plug A, forcing all oil to be filtered. But what this can cause is 
you to run out of oil at high RPMs. We need A to allow as much oil as possible to flow to this engine at high RPM ranges. It's, it's a necessary part. What we can do is we can increase bypass valve A to a 30 pound and that's again forcing more oil to be filtered. It's just the nature of the beast, right? It's forcing more oil to be filtered, but at the same time when your engine is running and at high RPMs when the oil pressure is high, not only are we getting more filtered oil, but if our filter was clogged at all, we would still have a path for oil to get to the top of the engine. Here's some part numbers over here for the bypass valves. You have a 10, pound, 10 to 11 pound AC Delco part number here, and that's basically what B and A are set to from the factory, I believe. Uh, they're both 10 pounds. And you have a 30 pound, 30 pound part number, it's a Chevy part number. And that's what I'm going to end up using. What I'm going to use is a 30 pound valve in A, and I'm going to use a 10 pound valve in B. The reason I'm putting a valve in B is because it acts as a check valve. And you'll see that when I show you the passages on the block. But both these valves are very critical, and I would not remove or block off any of them. If you want to change the settings, that's fine. But uh, just, just don't remove them. It's up to you. Once you see how it works, you know, that's your choice. Looking at our oil filter housing, here's where A goes. Bypass valve A just sits right in here. Bypass valve B sits down in the block, right? Or sits down further in the block. You can see this passage right here if you look. See where it lights up? Yeah, it comes right through. That hole is drilled from the side of the block right here. So, it drills all the way through to C, where C is at. And the way this is designed, it, if you have your oil cooler and adapter, it actually sits halfway down and forces your oil to come through the oil cooler. So it comes through the oil cooler, returns back down through D, and it connects to the passage in the bottom. There's another passage, and it's right there, that further hold, right? So we have that one that flows straight to D, comes through the bottom of C, right? That uh, fitting that goes in here forces it to come through the upper passage, return through here, and it goes through the lower passage at the bottom of C. And it goes straight to your oil galley right here. If you look, there's a bump in this block. So it goes down, and then you can see this other bump in the block where it goes straight to your uh, camshaft. Your two oil galleys are on the camshaft, right? Bypass valve B, though, is a bypass for the oil cooler itself. And it's drilled from this side. So it's drilled all the way down, and it connects straight to the camshaft. By blocking off A, what we're forcing is for the oil to come through here, get filtered, and return back down. It still goes through these passages. It still goes through the oil cooler. There's no stopping that, right? So when we when we do this, we block it off, force the oil to go down to these passages, and return to the galley. But the way it's designed is it has to make a 90 here, go down, and it's going to fill up this, but it's going to make a 90, make another 90, and it's going to come back and go to your oil galleys. So it had to make one, two, yeah, three nineties to return to your oil galley, main oil galley, right? Bypass valve B. If we remove bypass valve B, it allows a straight shot. It's like a 40, 145, right? A straight shot to your cam. So when we turn this engine off, that oil is going to have a straight shot to drain down back to your filter. Yes, your filter will hold some of the oil up, but over time, it will drain back down to the sump. The decision is ultimately up to you guys. Bypass valves are critical in any engine, and A is most definitely critical blocking that off. I would be a very unwise decision because we do need that oil at all times. And if that filter is clogged, we can't really monitor it, and you won't see it at high RPMs until it's too late. So we need bypass valve A. If you want to increase the setting on A to increase the amount of oil that is filtered, I, I agree with that. I will put a 30 pound, uh, 30 pound bypass valve in there. I would not remove B, but again, that's up to you guys. I'm going to put a 10 pound valve in there. If I was running an oil cooler, I would put a 30 pound valve in there and I, I would make 
both of them 30, and if I could increase to a different valve for A, right, if I'm definitely running B, I want as much oil cooled down as possible, and uh, I would still want as much filtered oil as possible. So what we're doing on our engine is we're going to run a 30 and a 10, and again, that's just to act as a check valve and force that oil to make all those 90 degree turns before it drains back down. If we don't do that, then that oil straight from the camshaft is going, it has a straight shot down to drain back down in the sump. So again, the decision is up to you guys. Uh, these bypass valves are pretty easy to, pretty easy to take out. Uh, you basically just take a bolt, right, and you screw it into the, screw it in, and you can pry it out. It, it takes little to no effort. And when you replace it and put another one in, you're just going to take a socket that fits the outside of this and tap it in gently. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. If you're rebuilding an engine, always change bypass valves. It's, it's not worth it. Some of these bypass valves get stuck open if there's any debris in the engine. Especially if you took it to a machine shop and they uh, dipped your engine. It's, it's going to have junk in there. It's just the nature of the beast again. And if any debris gets stuck in these bypass valves, what happens is they get stuck open. So your bypass valves are always opening in your engine. It's just a matter of what the ratio is that you want cooled or what the ratio is that you want filtered. Blocking them off or removing them, again, I, I, I don't feel it's a wise decision. But the decision's up to you. Good luck, guys.